Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how to make this super festive Santa beanie on your 46 or 48 pin knitting machine. Addy, Centro, it doesn't matter, they both do exactly the same thing, but this is a super quick, fun, festive make that you can whip up and spread a little joy amongst your friends and family. To make this beanie, you're gonna need some red Aran or worsted weight yarn. I'm using Stylecraft Special Aran here, but you can use Knit Picks Brava, you can use Paint Box, just a happy red festive yarn um, and some white yarn as well. You're gonna need more red than white. And again, it doesn't matter what brand, just as long as it's a worsted or an Aran weight yarn, because I find they work best with machines. You're gonna need a faux fur pom-pom, or you can make your own. You can have a woolen pom-pom. You're gonna need a tapestry needle, you're going to need some embroidery scissors and then if you wanted to you can have a tag to add to your hat to brand it afterwards so without further ado let's get going so first things first we're going to cast on and knit 40 rows in your red if you don't know how to cast on i've got a separate video that shows you how and i've popped a link to that in the top corner and i'll also pop it down in the description box as well don't forget that once you have cast on, you want to zero your counter because your cast on row doesn't count as one of the 40 rows that we need to do. So once you've cast on, pop your yarn in the yarn guide and go ahead and knit 40 rows. And I will meet you back when we're approaching row 40 and let you know what we need to do next. Just finishing the final row of 40 now. We're coming up to the end of the round and then what you want to do is you want to cut your red yarn and drop it to the left of the final pin just drop it into the middle there and then you want to join your white yarn this is going to make up the brim leave a tail so that we can knot the ends together soon and now here you can either zero your counter and do 30 more rows or you can carry on which is what i'm going to do and we want to knit to 70 rows so that's 30 rows in total if you're zeroing your counter and if you're carrying on from 40 onwards you want to knit until you hit row 70. make sure that the needles take the two ends in so that they don't hang loose because otherwise you'll unravel and then you want to go ahead and carry on knitting to row 70. So 30 more rows and I'll meet you back when we get to row 70. So there we are, that's 70 rounds done. What I've done in the middle here is when I got a few rows down, I've put a single knot just in the colour join to hold the two ends together and then we'll sort those ends out once um, the project is finished. So now that we're getting a little bit taller, what you can do is you can lift your work up so that it doesn't hit the bottom of the table that you're working on, because that can sometimes cause your stitches to lift up and can make tucked and dropped stitches more likely. So now that we've done 70 rows, we want to again break our yarn, pull it out of the yarn guide and drop it to the left of the pin. Just drop it into the middle. And then we want to get our red yarn again and attach the red yarn into the yarn guide to the right of the first black pin and close the yarn guide. On my other faux brim beanies, I often do the liner and brim all one colour, but because red and white are such different colours, I'm actually doing 40, 30, 40 of the red, white, red, so that the red outer is against a red inner so that you're not going to see white shining through from the red when you're wearing the hat. So now we're attaching the red yarn again and we're going to knit another 40 rows of red. If like me you haven't zeroed your counter that means we're going to go to 110 rows total. Um, if you're zeroing your counter again then you want to zero your counter and knit 40 rows of red just like we did at the beginning. Once you get four or five rows down after the colour change you can pop a single knot in your ends just to hold them together. Um, and then I will show you how to tidy up those ends before we sew the beanie together. So I'm going to go ahead and knit my 40 rows of red and then I'll meet you back at the end and we can get this beanie off our loom and get it popped together. Just finishing up the last row, 
row 110. There. So that's 110 rows total. And when you get to your 110 rows or however many rows you need for your tension, what you want to do is you want to leave a really decent tail because we're going to use this to pick up all the stitches. So my rule of thumb is if I run the yarn loosely around the edge of the machine before I cut it, then that's generally plenty for me to be able to pick my stitches up. So you want to remove your yarn from your yarn guide. Make sure that this last pin doesn't let go of the yarn because that can ha sometimes happen when you take it out of your yarn guide. So I hold it tight and pull, turn, sorry, until the pin goes down. And this is probably the worst colour yarn I could show you when casting off because it's red on red. So I have a separate casting off video that shows you much better because the yarn isn't the same colour as the machine. Um, so you might want to go and watch that. Um, but basically we thread a needle with our yarn and you turn the handle and you're wanting to pick up all of the stitches from the machine. You can do them one by one, you can turn the handle all the way around till they're all lifted off and then pick them up, whichever way works for you. But we want to go all the way around picking up these stitches and releasing them from the machine and popping them onto this scrap yarn. Once you've worked around and picked up all 46 stitches, you'll see that your work just falls off your loom into the middle. So now you can take your loom away and we're ready to sort out the ends and cinch it together. So to sort out the end, first things first, you want your tube inside out. And you want to give it a stretch to make sure that your stitches are nice and tight, because if you sort your ends before you pull this tube tight, then you are going to find that the knots pop through. So if, like me, you've already knotted yours, you just pull these knots tight. Not super tight, but you want them roughly the same tension as the rest of your stitches. And then you want to do a couple of nice tight knots on the ends. And then once you're happy with how many knots you've done, you can just trim off the ends and these ends can live happily inside of the hat. It doesn't matter because they're hidden. And again, I'm going to sort the other end. Once you've sorted the ends out and you're happy with them, you can turn your tube back the right way round because normally we have the knit stitches rather than the pearl stitches showing on the outside of our work. So generally, when I'm making a beanie, I like my tube to be between 52 and 55 centimetres long. I prefer personally making fitted beanies. I've made this one marginally longer because it is a Santa hat, so I don't know if you can see, but my tube is 55 centimetres long which is just about perfect for me. I would like to get them between 52 and 56, anything between those. And I know that the beanie is gonna fit 99% of people's heads. Obviously, if you have a particularly large head, you might need to go a little bit bigger to compensate for that fact, but it's entirely personal. It helps if you've got the person there because you, know, you can fit it to them. But if you are making beanies generally, then if you aim to have a tube between 55 and 56, 57 centimeters and you're going to be just fine in terms of fitting someone's head then what you want to do next is you want to pull these ends tight but not too tight just to gather the stitches up slightly and I like to put the right side of the beanie on the inside when I'm sewing it together so you want to turn your beanie double over on itself you want to make sure that the other end is out and you want to line up your two ends so that they're equal. Otherwise, when you sew together, you're gonna to end up with a twisted beanie. Once you've doubled your beanie over and you've lined your ends up, you want to thread a tapestry needle onto the yarn that's coming from the outer layer of the beanie. And you, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to pick up these stitches that are running around the edge. 
so I don't know if you can see but they look like they're little loops hanging off a zip line and they're the stitches that you're wanting to pick up from the inside edge and the outside edge and we're going to basically zipper them together to make a really nice tight cinch the first couple of stitches can sometimes be a bit difficult to find but if you pull the inner edge you can see there there's that little loop that we were looking for and you want to pull that up and pull your yarn through now we've taken one from the back so the next one we want to take is one from the front If you're finding it difficult to see because I'm using two of the same colours, again, I have a separate video that is in two bright contrasting colours that shows you how to go through and do it in an easier way. Because you can see the stitches better in my other video. Once you've got the first few stitches out of the way, they become much easier to pick up. The first few just tend to be a little bit tight and difficult to find. When you're picking up your stitches as well make sure that you're not catching this running yarn because we're going to need to pull that tight later to cinch the beanie close um, and if you pull it if you are snagging your yarn on on that running yarn as you're sewing them together when you pull it tight you're going to snap that running yarn and then you're going to end up with a beanie that will not cinch together because the yarn that you need to pull to tighten it all up and make it nice and neat and tidy will snap and when you pull it it's just going to come out and your beanie will basically unravel i find if i use a blunt needle i'm less likely to accidentally pick up some of that running yarn that's running through the middle of the stitches And you can already see where you're zippering across and zigzagging across one front one back one front one back it creates a really nice zipped together tight edge and it looks really neat and because you're um, sewing both ends together at the same time you don't end up with that bulky bit that you get if you cinch one end at a time and then sew the two ends together after they're cinched so I'm going to go ahead and finish off sewing this together and I'll meet you back round on the last few stitches and so that we can go through those together and pop a pom pom on and I'll show you how to finish the beanie off. So again, like at the beginning, the last few stitches, particularly on this outer edge, can be a little bit hard to find, especially if you've pulled your yarn tight at the beginning when you've been sewing them together. So just slow down, take it easy, and sometimes you have to hunt for the stitches because they tuck themselves in tight, but if you just keep looking for that running yarn that runs through them and pull the work about a little bit without tightening it, then you can normally find them quite nicely. So that's those all cinched together, tight sewed together. And now what we want to do is to cinch our beanie closed. The one thing I remind people when we're starting to tighten our beanie is that you need to remember that you've got one yarn that you didn't sew together with that is running through your beanie once. And then you have got your other yarn that you sewed your two ends together with that is running through the beanie twice. They both are in opposite directions. But what you can find is if you are too quick to tighten this yarn in particular that you sewed with, the inner loop won't tighten. So my top tip is to take it slow and steady when you are tightening your beanie up. So work a little bit of one yarn each at a time. And then you can see here that this hasn't yet tightened up. And can you see here you've got little snags of yarn that are showing through? That's because the inner loop hasn't tightened, although the outer loop has. 
so you want to hold your work open so it's not cinching tightly closed and gently pull and open it up again a little bit and pull and open it up again and then every now and again pull the other line of yarn as well to make sure that that is tightening nicely and if you take it slowly and steady then you will find that your whole gap cinches up quite nicely what i also advise that you do is every now and again you turn your work the other way round and take a look at it here to make sure that you've not got a loop of yarn hanging out where it's got caught on the opposite side it doesn't look like that here and then once you're confident that your two ends are tightening nicely that's when you can just put a little bit more gusto into it and pull it tight and if you look i know lots of people don't necessarily like this method but this is my favorite you can get the hole nice and tight the trouble with loom knit hats over hand knit hats is because you don't work any decreases you are forced to work with the amount of stitches that you have on the machine so your your closure is never going to be as neat as a hand knit hat because with a hand knit hat we'd work some decreases before we do the crown and often you decrease right the way down tiny tiny but with this this is the neatest way that i found it's the way that i like to work and I think that for a machine knit beanie, it gives the best result. Once you are happy with how tight it is, you want to work some nice tight knots. And then once you've worked those knots, you can just cut the ends close to the knot. This is going to be on the inside of the hat, so it doesn't really matter. You won't see it. So there in essence is your finished beanie with a nice crown and you can just give it a few stretches out to shape it. And then we can add our pom pom. In this case, it is the finishing touch because you can't have a Santa hat without a pom pom. It's against the law. So I like to use pom poms with a button because that means that for spot washing, people can take the pom-pom off because faux fur does not like to be get wet and washed at all. So I tell my customers if they want to spot wash their beanie to take the pom-pom off and I attach it with a button. It's a nice, neat and tidy way. They can get the button off easily uh, for spot washing, uh, but it also secures the button really nicely. So to attach my pom-pom, I find the crown of the hat and I thread the two strings that the pom my pom-pom comes with and I pop it right through the middle of the hole from the cinch. I find the easiest way to get make sure that my pom-pom is nice and tight is to turn the hat inside out on itself so that it's kind of snuggling the pom-pom tight so that it can't wobble about and we can get a nice tight bow. If your pom-pom that you buy doesn't come with buttons, you can just use a large button. It doesn't have to be wooden, just two holes or even four holes and you just use two of them. And you want to thread your strings through the button. And I do a double bow. I don't like to knot it because I want to make it easy for people to be able to take it off when they're spot washing their hat. So I do a nice tight single knot and then two tight double bows. So one bow two bows and that is nice and secure that pom-pom is not going anywhere then you can just floof it up a bit i tend to give it a blast with a hairdryer not great on a white background but there we have one santa beanie and then as a finishing flourish i've sadly only got gray I should have a more festive colour, but I'm going to add a tag onto the beanie so that people know that I've made it. These tags are great. I got them from a company called Cut Design on Etsy. They come from Turkey, but the shipping was reasonable and actually arrived really quickly. And I could customise these any way I wanted. And they had a huge selection of colours. I'll link their Etsy shop down below because they're a really good business to deal with. 
So my tags attached with screw rivets. And there we have one finished Santa Beanie. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if there's anything else you'd like to see from me, then please just let me know. Take care and see you soon. Bye.